Welcome to the Serious Shift Blogcast. We have only one question. What does Serious Shift mean to you? To answer that and much more, here's your host, Dennis Mosley-Williams. Hi, I'm Dennis, and welcome back to the Serious Shift Blogcast, episode number 105. Thank you very much for joining me. If you're new, welcome. You found a happy, positive place on the internet for creators and business owners and people who want to do more work that matters. Here's my question for you today. My question is, do you know what the 80-20 rule is? And if so, have you identified your top 20% activities? For those of you who don't know, the 80-20 rule is another name for the Pareto principle, which tells us that 80% of our revenue will stem from only 20% of our clients. And it also tells us that 80% of our revenue will stem from 20% of the things that we do. The obvious opposite of that is that if you don't watch out, you can spend 80% of your time working on things that seem important that aren't really important, that actually only contribute 20% of your revenue to your business. So here's my story. Several years ago, I invited Tom Frisbee to become my business partner. And, uh, Before Tom could agree, of course, he had to do an audit of my business. He had to come and get his hands around what I had going here. He needed to understand it. So he flew to Ottawa and we spent the weekend together. And he asked me these three questions. And these are questions that you need to ask yourself. The first question he asked me was, so what do you do? What business are you really in? And that's that's like the holy grail of questions for business. That's where you start. What business am I really in? Now, let me just take a moment with that question. Maybe you know. Maybe you have a fantastic answer for that question, or maybe you don't. So let's hedge on you don't. Here's how you get that answer. You you get the answer to question one by asking three follow-up questions. The first of which is, that thing I do, this thing I do, what does it really do? I mean, when somebody does it, what happens as a consequence of it? The second follow-up question that you can ask is, Who do I do this for specifically and be precise as possible? And the third question is, what change do I help create? So what does my my work, what change does it help create? What business am I really in? What do I really do? That's the first question. At the time, Tom and I kicked that around. I came up with, I inspire people to innovate and implement meaningful change in their life and business. Okay? Okay. That was fantastic. Tom says, wonderful, wonderful. He says, how? How do you do that? So at the time that I want Tom to become my partner, I felt two things. One was that I was working way too hard. The second um, was that I was leaving entirely too much opportunity on the table, that people wanted to work with me and hire me, and I didn't have the skill set to, to do it. I didn't have the time or the skills. I needed Tom. So he says, this thing you do, what do you do? So I list out, go to the first part, which is I'm so busy. I made, you know, as we say, a list as long as my arm of all the things that I do. Jeez, I do this, I do this, I do this, I do this, I do this. Wonderful. Got this big list out. Okay. Then we went through that list and Tom said, okay, every single thing on this list, let's find out, does it meet your mandate? Does doing this, and one of the things I was doing that was especially painful at the time was I was building an application for salesforce.com so that anybody who used Salesforce could effectively download my brain into Salesforce and and apply it to their their practice. So Tom says, well, you know, that's all great and interesting and interesting, I suppose. But does does it inspire people to innovate and implement? And I had to admit that no, it didn't. In fact, that wasn't the only thing that I did every single day that didn't actually help me meet my mandate. It wasn't in my 20% activities that did 80% of the gain. It was actually just busy work that was sucking all kinds of time, energy, and money into it. So by the end of step two, effectively what happened is Tom took away 80% of the things I did And literally was like, listen, just for now, and he probably only said it that way to make it easier for me, you know, positioning this as something that could change. But he basically said, look, just for now, we're going to stop doing all of these things. And we're just going to focus on these three things. And those three things were, I speak in rooms full of people, I speak on the telephone, and I write stuff. That was back in the day my blog was written. So while I'm thinking of it, if you like the video blogs, that's great. I've done 105 of them. 
But if you visit our website and look in the blog archives, you'll see I've been posting a blog for like 10 years. So let's take these three things and, and part three. So part one was what do you do? Part two was how? And the third question is how do you do it better? So Tom says, you know, we just eliminate all kinds of your obligation. Now let's look at talking in rooms full of people. How can you do it better? Okay. Well, geez, I considered how I could present it better. I considered how with all this other stuff that I don't have to do now, I could do better research and always have more current and relevant examples, etc. I revisited all of my lousy PowerPoints, you know. I took a look at Prezi. I did all kinds of stuff. I actually was really intentional about, you know, designing time effectively, about engaging with the audience before I got on stage and afterwards and all kinds of stuff. I improved my call to action. I improved my gathering of, you know, in, uh, data on the people in the room and all kinds of great stuff. It made a huge impact. Okay, wonderful. Go to number two. What was the other thing that you do all the time that actually you should do that leads to all of these wonderful results? Well, I talk on the phone all the time. Okay, I'm going to admit this to you. You ready? If I wasn't out on the road talking in rooms full of people, I sit at my desk. I'm on the phone for like eight hours a day. You ready? Tom says, have you got a headset? No, I don't have a headset. You're on the phone all day long and you don't have a headset? You got to have a headset. How, what, you, you hold the phone like this or like this? You write your notes with your head like, how, you, like this on your computer? Or do you put your headset on and capture notes? And what's your desk like? Do you have a hydraulic stand-up desk? So you're sitting there all day? No, no, no. You need state-of-the-art state of the art equipment. You need a great big monitor. You need a... You, I had a good computer, of course. But you need a headset, etc. You need a desk that goes up and down. You need really good lighting and a really comfortable chair. If you're going to be on the phone all day, you got to make the most of every minute, man. If you're going to stand in front of a room full of people, you don't want to just be this. You want to be, oh my God, that guy was amazing. You want to be life-changing. Go to the third one. It was my blog. So Tom goes, so your blog, I like it. I read it from time to time. He goes, it's good. You're doing a good job. I said, oh, thanks, Tom. He goes, yeah. How often do you post it? <laughs> and the answer was like, you know, as often as I can. Basically, the truth was sporadically when I could get to it, sometimes in the morning, sometime at night, sometimes two, one on Monday, one on Tuesday, not for another week, sometimes three days a week. Sometimes I wouldn't post one for seven days. Tom goes, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, great, great, great blog. I love what you write, yeah. And then he says, you read any other blogs? I go, yeah, I read this blog, I read this blog, this blog. These, I love these blogs. He goes, right on. When do they put their, when do those guys put their blogs out? <laughs> like... Usually, like, first thing in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, Tom says, yeah. He says, do you think you could publish a blog every day and post it at 5 o'clock in the morning? Like, what can you do? I said, oh, I could post a blog five days a week, and for years I did. So all of a sudden, I started posting a blog five days a week, every single morning at, like, 5.30 in the morning, so that you, dear reader, would wake up in the morning, and while you were making coffee in the kitchen, you'd check your email on your telephone and bang what would one of the very first emails you'd have in there be from dennis and i'd give you a nice little three minute blog to read in the morning to start your monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday oh my goodness and everything took off so here we exist today in the coronavirus and like me you're probably every day looking looking for the smartest and best things that you can be working and investing in in your business to make sure that this thing is still there when you need it to be and that you don't just survive but thrive. So might I suggest that a wonderful place for you to start today is to look at those 20% activities that lead to 80% of your gain, that there's nothing more important than that today, and that once you identify all those other things that you don't need to do, that you just stop doing them. It'll create all kinds of time for you that you can focus on those things that make more sense for your business. It's not rocket surgery. And yet I say that, but I can empathize. I've been there myself. I remember when I was working really, really hard and everything seemed important. And it took an uh, objective outside perspective to point out, nah, you're just feeling good because you're busy. But what you really need to be doing is focusing on these key actions they lead to everything. Identify what they are and then figure out how you can make them matter more by making them better. Decrease sacrifice for your client. Make it easier on your client. Make it easier on you. Thanks everybody. Wherever you are in blog land, just hang in there, okay? We're all going to get th through this together. Not as quickly as we'd like, but a lot sooner than we fear. 
Be well. I'll see you again in a couple of days. Thanks for sharing and thanks for reaching out. Cheers. We hope you enjoyed the Serious Shift broadcast. We would love any suggestions, feedback on topics, ideas, or challenges that may have you feeling stuck. Also, please leave a five-star review wherever you are enjoying this content. It helps Dennis out tremendously. On behalf of Dennis and the team, see you next episode.